Reports of flying saucers are nothing new. These are routine sightings, not isolated events. Are you seeing that? It's spinning. There's a whole swarm of them. Oh, my God. They're all against the wind. All against the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. That's 110, 150. Oh, There was an historic hearing today on Capitol Hill and an unprecedented bipartisan push for UFO transparency. I started thinking about what was the subject that was the one that everybody told you you shouldn't look at, the most stigmatised, the most taboo, but also the one that had the most obvious leads for investigation. And that story, of course, was UFOs, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, UAPs as we call them now. There is no story more stigmatised in journalism. If it's covered at all, it's treated with ridicule and contempt. And I could never understand why, frankly. Yes, there are some mentally ill people who are drawn to this subject, but it's always struck me how so many UAP sightings witnesses that I meet are credible, often highly intelligent people, describing something anomalous that baffled and sometimes even scared them. Numerous times in the last few decades in my career, I've taken calls from people, first-hand witnesses, telling me they've seen UFOs, UAPs, many claimed to have seen intelligently controlled craft, clearly not human technology. And I have to admit, I treated them with ridicule, dismissiveness and stigma. I remember very early in my career, there was a, a woman who rang the news desk of the newspaper I was working for and she said she'd seen a UFO while she was hanging out her washing on her washing line and she'd run inside, grabbed her film camera and taken three shots and she said she still had the film in the camera and so I said oh that's interesting bring it in and so the photographic editor developed the film straight out of the camera as we all waited outside and out he came with this huge big blow up of a metallic disc hovering over this woman's washing line and I freely admit I was a young buck in the newspaper and I was very excited and I took it to my editor later in the day and I said look at this we've got a great story and he scoffed and he said, Roscoe, we don't do stories about UFOs. And I said, why not? And he said, they're nonsense. And for days afterwards, I was doing little tinfoil hats on my desk and you learned very quickly as a journalist, you don't cover this subject. And frankly, I found it perplexing because I'd found the woman credible. Insisting upon reporting uh, these encounters with these extraordinary vehicles. For example, uh, General Bethune. General Bethune, who was the first general officer uh, in the United States Air Force after it was created at the end of World War II, it used to be the U.S. Army Air Force, and, uh, and then it was made a separate branch. And uh, General Bethune was the first commissioned general officer uh, in the United States Air Force. And he had, uh, he had been, it was the commander of a, of a flight uh, flying a number of American scientists uh, up to Greenland. Uh, and this is like about 1948 or 1949. And there had been a number of reports there of these extraordinarily strange aircraft uh, flying around up uh, by Greenland. And the, uh, some of the people who were not read into this program of what was going on uh, actually uh, directed these scientists to go up to Greenland to kind of observe what was happening up there. Uh, and General Bethune was the pilot of this plane. There were two crews, I had a long conversation with General Bethune about this, that there were two crews of pilot, co-pilot, and navigator that would, uh, would take turns flying. They had just gotten refueled up over the North Atlantic, uh, and they were flying through the night. Uh, and about two o'clock in the morning, uh, the co-pilot looks down and sees this ring of lights way down uh, below it at uh, sea level. Uh, and he said, wait a so this shouldn't be, you know, th that looks like a little town or something down there. 
we're supposed to be out over the North Sea, uh, that uh, let's recheck uh, our navigation. They confirmed that they were out over the North Sea and suddenly this ring of lights just ascended into the sky uh, right in front of their craft. Uh, and it was, it was, uh, it was the uh, 100 feet wide, uh, directly in the, in the front of the craft. It was in the, the headlights of the craft. Uh, and uh, General Bethune was afraid that they were going to run into it. And so what he did is he nosed the, the craft over suddenly and, and had this steep dive and then leveled off. And the craft just backed off and followed them. Uh, and he then turned to the co-pilot and said, uh, he said, look, that was a, a, a pretty sharp move we had to make. I need to go back and check on uh, the scientists and stuff that are back in the passenger compartment. Uh, take the wheel here. So he gets up and goes back. He goes back. And it was uh, the Bethune's telling the story. He said, I go back into the, to the passenger cabin and like, you know, like uh, 12 of these scientists were all glued to the windows, you know, w looking out the window at this craft. You know, all just kind of stunned at what was happening there, except for one guy who was standing in the aisle uh, with his back turned to all of them and his arms crossed like this in the hall, in the, in the, in the passenger's compartment. And so General Bethune went over to him and said, are you all right? Are you all right? And he said, yes, yes, I'm all right. And General Bethune said, did you see that out there? Do you see that out there? And the guy turned to him and he said, I'm a scientist. I don't believe in those things. I'M NOT LOOKING. <laughs> yeah. GOVERNMENT REALLY BE CONCEALING A TOP SECRET UFO PROGRAM? SEVERAL SENATORS SAY THE ANSWER IS YES. DEMOCRATIC SENATE MAJORITY LEADER CHUCK SCHUMER IS SPEARHEADING LEGISLATION TO ESTABLISH A GOVERNMENT-WIDE UAP RECORDS COLLECTION. FEDERAL AGENCIES NOW HAVE TO REVEAL EVERYTHING THEY KNOW ABOUT UAPs BY OCTOBER 20TH. Schumer claims that the United States government has gathered a great deal of information about UAPs over many decades, but has refused to share it with the American people. He says that is wrong and additionally breeds mistrust. And then there is Senator Mike Rounds, a Republican from South Dakota who led the measure with Schumer. He said the proposed legislation is modeled after the John F. Kennedy Assassination Records Act. Another Republican senator, Marco Rubio, told News Nation the latest string of UAP whistle blower claims should be taken seriously. I find most of these people at some point, or maybe even currently, have held very high clearances and high positions within our government. So you start at, you do ask yourself, like, what incentive would so many people with that kind of um, qualification, these are serious people, have to come forward and make something up? Yet the Pentagon has repeatedly denied that such a program is even real. No verifiable evidence that any UAP sighting represented extraterrestrial activity, uh, that the U.S. government or private industry had has ever had access to extraterrestrial technology, or that any information was illegal illegally or inappropriately with help from Congress. NASA has also released its own investigation, stating that at this point, there is no reason to conclude that existing UAP reports have an extraterrestrial source. Despite the Pentagon and NASA's findings, Schumer is expected to once again introduce legislation to further look into UAP programs in the coming months.